how you doing? Did you smile today? Hey, did you smile today? Hey, did you smile today? How you doing? So today I'm gonna be doing my wash and go combo, go-to combo routine, whatever I title this video. I'm gonna be doing a wash and go. These are all the products I'm gonna be using. This is like my staple go-to combination. So I use the Shea Moisture Leave-In Conditioner, the Jamaican Black Castor Oil one. I use the Carol's Daughter Coco Cream Coil Enhancing Moisture Butter to like give some more moisture, really seal in that leave-in conditioner. And then I top it off with the Wetline Extreme Gel, the original one, because I've not tried the navy blue top one yet. I still got some of this left. So I did wash my hair yesterday and I applied my leave-in inside the shower and then I went to sleep. But I woke up and I put my hair like this. Quick style, but I'm about to take this down and do a wash and go. All right, so I sectioned off my hair. The key to a perfect wash and go is water. Water is like the main source. Hot water to be exact. Put hot water inside your spray bottle because it's going to spray off kind of warm so you want to be almost as hot as possible. Not boiling but almost as hot as possible. Now if you're doing your hair like me like outside the shower make sure that you wear a shirt that you don't mind getting wet and either have like a towel or another shirt in your lap. Probably a towel around your shoulders. It's going to get a little wet okay. But if you have low porosity hair or you want the max amount of definition, style your wash and go inside the shower. That is the best way to style your wash and go. I usually do my wash and goes inside the shower. That's like my go-to when I'm not filming. The steam from the shower keeps your hair cuticles open to receive products and like you could easily just dunk your head in some water instead of using the spray bottle over and over again. Just make sure when you do your hair inside the shower to be careful not to get water into your products because they get too watery and the consistency get all messed up. But we're gonna take this section, split it into two. I'm gonna get this section nice and wet you're gonna be generous with this one make sure that your hair is detangled your hair has to be detangled to do this and that's another reason why doing your hair so the shower is better because you just shampoo you just deep condition your hair should already be detangled so you might as well just put your products on anyway but if you don't want to style your hair inside the shower make sure that you at least put your leave-in conditioner on inside the shower so this is how my hair looks with just water added to it but these are how it's looking. I'm gonna add the smallest amount of leave-in just because, just the smidgetest amount. Now that my hair is thoroughly detangled, I'm ready to add my moisture butter. Now this butter is thick, two C's, no K. So I'm only gonna be using a little bit. I'm really gonna work that in. The reason why we use so many like moisturizing products before adding our gel is because you know gel is drying. That's where, like the crunchiness comes from gel. Like that crunchy feeling is because it's like holding your curls in place. So you want to make sure that your curls are nice and moisturized, especially to have your wash and go last a full week. As you guys know, I only wash my hair once a week. I don't like washing my hair every three days. You can do that if you want to, but me and my hair, we don't do that over here. And honestly, for a wash and go, always start off small. The reason why you have so much buildup and like flaking is because you use too much product. So always start off small, see how your hair feels, see how it looks, and then add more as you go. Doing your hair inside the shower also helps with frizz because the water will like make that frizz just go away. Bam, bam, bam. Now I'm ready to add my gel. Always start off with just a little bit. Here's an example. Some products don't mix together because it will cause flaking. So if you wanna know if your product will mix together with your gel, put a little bit of your product, a little bit of the gel, mix it together inside your hands and it should look like this it should mix well together if it starts to clump look like that is cheesy that's how you know that that product and that gel they don't go together they're not friends i'm gonna add my gel what i like to do is start from the bottom work my way up make sure you get them roots you can see the excess product coming off on my knuckles because i'm really squeezing it start off small i like to do the praying hands method where i put my hair between my hands Smooth it all the way down. I like to do the raking method. So when I put my fingers between my hair, it really rake that product in. And since my hair is already detangled, this shouldn't be a problem. Some people like the shingling method. The shingling method gives the most definition, but it takes the most time. It's when you take a piece of your hair and you shingle it strand by strand, and then you go around your entire head. We ain't doing that. But when I let this go, this is how my curls are looking. Nice and clumped together minimum frizz i take a little bit more gel make sure that you put it on your roots i did my eyeliner today you guys what do you think <laughs> 
we pray that this would be cute. Look at that, look at this. This is why I wear white so you guys can really like, see it. Look at this definition. And when I feel satisfied, then I move on to the next section. This is usually how I do it. We split my hair into four sections and then I take one of the sections, I split it in half. I do one side or the other, one side and the other, you know, repetitively. But applying the products is quick. It only takes me about 30 minutes while I'm not filming. It's the drying time that takes forever. But we'll talk about that, we'll talk about that. So a lot of water, a little bit of leave-in conditioner. Make sure I only grab the pieces that I haven't done yet. You'll feel the difference. Oh, that's another thing. My wash and goes take 30 minutes to do, but yours might take longer or short, depends on like your hair length. If your hair is like about this long, it's gonna take you about 30 minutes-ish. But if your hair is like really short, it's, it's no time at all. Wash and go. <laughs> And also make sure that you're detangling your roots. Some people will like detangle and brush their hair, but they won't detangle their roots up here. Make sure that you do that. A little bit of moisture butter. Make sure that you also take your time to really work in the products to your hair, especially if you're low porosity. The, our low porosity is a little bit more stubborn. The products don't want to go into hair strands, so you kind of have to like push it in there. But high porosity will like drink up the product like you didn't put it in there, so. For high porosity, you want to add a little more. And if you guys can really see, this is the comparison of like frizzy, no gel versus hair with gel. Take your gel. And I like to do this when I'm usually done with a section. I like to prayer hands the entire section all together. This really helps clump my hair together and get the excess product off my curls. This looks pretty good. <laughs> All right, my hair is done. You can really see like the height difference is this side is starting to dry. <laughs> as soon as I finish like prayer hands and my hair together, I do not touch it. I like to air dry mainly because I use my blow dryer to stretch my hair so I don't want to add too much extra heat and also I don't own a diffuser. Usually it doesn't take that long for the outer layer to get dry. It's just the inside, the very depths inside that takes forever to get dry because air can't really get there. But I'll be back in a few hours and I'm going to show you guys like how I go to sleep with wet hair because I, I sleep with wet hair. That's why I usually like to do my wash and goes like during the day to like give it the entire day to dry as much as it can before I go to sleep. So I'll be back. Good evening. It's around 10 p.m. So this is how my hair looks. Look at these curls. It is so defined. Yes, yes, yes. So my hair is still wet. I don't know if you guys can really tell. Like the bright lights make it seem shiny. <laughs> but it's like dry on like the outside. Like bangs dry. This is dry. It's like if I put my hands inside, it's wet. So the way that I sleep at night, it kind of varies on how dry my hair is. There's different ways that I go to sleep. If my hair is like pretty much dry, I can sometimes get away with taking a scrunchie and just like tying this back really loosely. I'm not wrapping around more than just once. It's like a loose scrunchie, scarf over my head, and then I go to bed. If my hair is like damp, and I also do this when I take naps, I'll take like an old t-shirt, microfiber towel, whatever you have, and I'll put it over my pillowcase and I'll just like lay on it because I like to lay on my side. And when I sit up, I shake my head to make sure like that side's not too flat. All my pillowcases are silk. Well, satin, but I want my pills to get wet, you know what I'm saying? Because if my face touches that later, you know, the acne, it's just, yeah. But you kind of have to like sleep carefully in the way that you're laying on top of your curls. I think one of the biggest things is like if you're laying down and your hair's like this and your curls dry while you're sleeping, your hair's gonna dry like this. It's gonna be up here. A prime example is when I did my wash and go using. It's the Laid Slay Pro Gel. I like show like a short little clip right here because I took a nap and the way that my hair was like this, that's because I fell asleep like that by accident. So something that I would do is like, I will push my hair down and then put my head on the pillow so like it stays flat. You can use clips as well to help like lay your hair flat in certain places. But what I also do, I wrap my head in my t-shirt and then I just go to sleep. This is what I do when my hair is like soaking wet especially. <laughs> And when it's pretty damp, like how it is right now. So I will put the t-shirt on like how you will usually do when you get out the shower and you want to wrap that little turban right here, like that little knot. And this is pretty much how I will go to sleep, you know, looking like, <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> Did you smile today? The only thing about this is like when you put the t-shirt on, you know, your hair right here goes backwards. It's gonna dry like that. So what I like to do <laughs> is open it a little bit, take my hand, and I make sure the curls lay flat. Like I want the curls to lay how I want it to look like when I wake up. I want it to be like this. Like right now, it looks like this. I don't want that. I essentially like pull my curls down 
and then put the t-shirt over it pull out your ears so that your ears don't get wet and just sleep like this and this is like how i would go to sleep at night i know it's weird i know it looks funny but this is what you do when you don't have a diffuser like I do. This this is the method I came up with. Like some people, as far as like looser textures, I think, like they can just like put their hair in a bun, go to sleep, and the next day they just like to take the bun out. My hair don't do that, okay? When it dries, my hair, it don't move. It don't move. Like when it's dry, it dries in that spot. So for me, I want to dry downward so this way i'm laying on top of my curls so there's no like crazy friction going on like how it would be with like, regular cotton pillows and this kind of speeds up the drying time because while i'm sleeping this t-shirt's gonna soak up all that extra moisture all the extra water it's gonna help with my hair dry faster so i'm gonna sleep like this i'm gonna see you guys tomorrow for the stretching part the stretching and the shaping the best part to get there wash and go like bam i don't like a mushroom anymore all right good morning so let's take this out <laughs> oh my gosh so this is my hair see how i said like i had like lay flat so everything's laying in formation but it's pretty flat because i sleep on both sides shake 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 your uh um -uh. shake your uh uh um -uh. right here it's still wet <laughs> like the very back is still wet on the inside but right here is dry so my hair is still pretty defined so i'm gonna get ready for the day some people say like to have your hair out while you're showering because the steam will like loosen it up and stuff that's up to you i don't want to risk getting my hair wet again so i'm just gonna put on a shower cap get ready for the day i'll be back to stretch my hair yeah okay i'm ready to stretch and fluff my hair so for stretching your hair and fluffing your hair you can either use the banding method you can use a blow dryer, you can use both, you can use neither. For fluffing your hair, you can use a pick, you can use your hands. It kind of depends on you and your hair. Me and my hair, we like to use both. We like to do the banding method and use a blow dryer. So that's what I'm about to do. And you obviously do not have to stretch out your hair. You can leave your hair as shrunken as it is. It looks the most defined this way. Like, look at my curls and coils. Oh my goodness. Like I always say type 4 hair, you guys can let me know what you think my hair type is. I know definitely that my hair right here and back here are two different things, but coils are popping and I could just wear my hair just like this. I don't always stretch my hair. It kind of depends on how I'm feeling, but I'm gonna stretch my hair real quick. So first I'm gonna section it off without disturbing the curls. So I'm gonna start off with a section about this big. It kind of depends on how you feel and how many sections you wanna do. I might do like three or four on this side and three or four on this side. So the thing about stretching on your hair, we are stretching this Part out we're not touching this we're going to keep the nice coils at the end so like you see your hair is nice and elongated but you have a nice coil at the end still and they say that stretching your hair helps with single strand knots but like I don't, I don't know I don't know what the proof is with that but if it does cool now if you want to use a heat protecting you can I'm not going to so I'm not gonna blast my hair for that long but what I do use is a spray bottle I do one two sprays of water. I spray my hair with water because sometimes when I stretch my hair, I don't know like when to let go. As soon as like the water dries on my hair, that's when I know, okay, my hair is fully stretched out, if that makes sense. So I start off with low heat, hold my hair taut, and I just stretch it. And that's it, it's just a quick blast of heat. My hair is nice and stretched, it is dry. So as you can see, my curls are still defined, they're just stretched out. But these are how they look, and you still have the nice coils at the ends. And when I finish stretching the section, I like to band it as well. While my hair cools down, and like to get it out the way. So banding is basically taking a scrunchie, twist it, band it. Again, take another scrunchie, put it on like normal, twist it, band it like you're moving downwards but you're not banding all the way to the ends and i let this hang and then i move on if you're doing the banding method by itself i would suggest leaving the bands on for a few hours before you head out but if you're doing the blow drying and the banding method you don't have to keep the bands in for that long but this will ensure that your hair stays stretched as you move around your entire head now my next section here this is how it looks before I stretch it, I pull it down to where like there's still coils at the ends. Take my spray bottle, one, two sprays. Kind of rub that in a little bit. Low heat, you could also do this on cool heat and then yeah. And let go and you see my hair is hanging a little bit lower. It's nice and stretched. Take a band, 
stretching your hair really shows off that length honey and then keep going i'm gonna split this into two you also do not have to like stretch your entire head everyone's heads like shape different in terms of, like their hair cut for example sometimes when i wear my side part i don't stretch like the bigger side because i don't want the bang to cover my eyes so i'll leave that alone but i'll stretch like the back stretch it to fit your face the best Okay, all my hair is now stretched. Also, do not force your curls apart when you're making your sections. As you can see, some sections are bigger than others. And stretching your hair can also help with the gel cast if your hair feels a little bit crunchy after it's dry. So really break that gel cast. So I decided not to stretch these, but I might pin them, do my edges real quick. I'm only gonna leave these in for roughly maybe like 10, 30 minutes, something like that. So I'll be back to show you how I pick and fluff my hair for the final look. All right, we are back, hoops are on, lip gloss on, edges done, done, done. So as you can clearly see, I already took out my bands and I kind of stretched out these two pieces already too. So these are how my curls are looking, very nice and quilled in, showing. There is a link difference. Can editor Aaron Q roll the footage side by side with me, with my hair stretched versus me with my hair, you know, shrunken and just, eh, and this is, uh, you know so last thing i do is take my handy dandy pick you guys i've had this pick since middle school i low-key need a new pick but i've seen Raina do it happy curl happy girl so she takes some oil and puts it like on like the tips of her pick to like reduce the breakage and like it just helps with the slippage to like slide the pick in and lift up the roots without damaging the roots you know so i get that nice and lubricated so what i've done so far is i've straightened my hair down now i gotta pick it out to get some volume and also to get rid of like the middle part that's like right here pick your hair you just slide the pick in and you lift and then you slide it up slide in lift slide it up and you can already <laughs> <laughs> you can already see the difference on both sides. If we're like the very, very back, sometimes I might be a little extra and do this to like really get in there. What you don't want to do is pick like towards your ends. Like you can pick your roots, you could pick a little bit of your hair, like down the hair shaft, maybe like halfway, but don't pick your ends. Your ends have to stay curly, coiled. If your ends don't look good, the rest of the hair don't look good. And honestly, just keep playing with it until you see what you like. I like this. It looks so good. My hair is stupid soft, by the way. There's no crunchy feeling. Like this hold on my hair, but because like the um, cocoa cream really shining through, my hair is stupid soft. I'm rocking a middle part, which I never do. You know, the thing like, only millennials have like side parts and like skinny jeans. Whatever. <laughs> so I'm trying to embrace my middle part more, but I feel like my middle part, you can really see the layers that I have. Like you can see the top layer, the middle and the bottom. So I really try to mesh these layers together. So it, it looks like this is short, but then it comes a little bit more seamless, but I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. And also feel free if any of your curls like really clump together to pull them apart. So you can find where it naturally will separate and just gently pull it apart all the way to the root. Try to do this to the root and then it'll create a little bit more volume, kind of like how you do with your twist out where you see where it naturally separates and then you pull it apart. Ooh, this is so cute. And this is a big difference from my no product wash and go, which I have linked up there and down below. I'm gonna get really close so you can really focus in on my curls and my coils. They're really shining through like bam. <laughs> On this side looks really good really really good but yeah you guys I don't think I'm missing anything hopefully I explained everything correctly that's pretty much my wash and go routine I've been using those same products I stretch my hair the same I like to think that I'm really really good at twist outs and I really want to get better at wash and goes and there's different ways to style a wash and go so I want to like try other people's styles so if you guys like to see more wash and go videos let me know in the comments down below I might just do them regardless <laughs> Oh, that's nothing. Once you like how your hair looks, just stop touching it because you're going to just create friction and then frizz and all that stuff. You don't want all that. And then knots. Uh -uh. Also, there's so many different ways to go to sleep. 
you kind of have to try the different methods to see what works best for you. If you guys want to see a video like that, just let me know. I'll do like different nighttime routines, show you guys different ways to go to sleep. It's the hoops and the curls for me. Honestly, when I first started doing wash and goes, it was stiff. Like I used to have that mindset, oh my hair is too short to do wash and goes. It ain't that, it was it was the method. I, I didn't do the method right. Like many things, it takes practice. It takes practice, you you got this, okay? If you wanna wash and go, you got this, okay? It's not, it's really a wash and go. It's like a wash, maybe like 24 hour later go, like. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Give it a thumbs up, a like, comment down below, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.